S&P 500 index funds are among the most popular investments out there. The TSP has its own version called the C fund. And when we work with new clients, many people have that as a part of their portfolio. And most of them love it because of how much growth it's provided them over the years. And while it's good at growing, it also has some serious drawbacks that you need to be aware of. In this video, I'm gonna share when is this a good investment for you and when the S&P might actually be hurting your portfolio. And then I'll share what you need to be thinking about as you review your own investment mix. Before we do that, if you've ever been confused by the endless acronyms that your agency has, hit the like and subscribe button. Guys, today we're covering the S&P 500 and when it can do more harm than good. You see, the same characteristics that provide all of the growth in the S&P also cause some challenges, namely volatility. Remember that risk and reward come hand in hand. For an investment to have a lot of reward or growth, it must also come with risk. And in the S&P's case, a lot of volatility. If we look at history, the S&P 500 has lost 30 to 40% of its value every five to seven or so years. Now, when you're working and you're thinking about retirement 10 or more years beyond, that's not so much of a problem for you. You're mostly just focused on that long-term end result. But what if you don't have 10 years? What if you're retiring in five or less years, or perhaps you're already retired? Well, this is when the risks begin. Let's look at this graph together. This is a graph from BlackRock, who's the manager for most of the TSP funds. This graph shows three portfolios with the same overall annual return, but with each year being different from one another. In other words, the sequence of their returns is different. If the accounts are never touched and just left to grow, you can see that over time, they tend to end up in a rather similar place even though the paths they took were a little different. But this all changes when you introduce distributions or withdrawals from your portfolio. If we take the same three portfolios starting in the same place and still having the same annual return on average, but we introduce making withdrawals from their portfolio, which kind of sounds like retirement, right? We can see that there are three completely different endpoints two of which don't look really good. They all had the same average annual return, so how can this happen? I'll show you exactly how, but first, if you like this kind of video, please give the video a thumbs up so that we know to make more of this kind of thing. All right, so now let's look at how the damage was done. Let's assume this is your portfolio's value, just like we saw in the graphs earlier. It fluctuates over time. And you're starting to take money out of your accounts because you're retired. So maybe here, you took some money out, and. Maybe here you took money out, here and here. And of course, this is time going forward. Well, we know that values go up and down. So inevitably, you'll be taking money out of your accounts when values are lower, like perhaps here and here. Life doesn't stop just because markets have gone down in value. Well, by doing this, you've essentially taken these piles of money completely out of the markets. And what that does is it never allows it the opportunity to regrow once again, once the markets recover. So you're essentially making the declines in this portion of your portfolio a permanent loss. And this is exactly what led two out of those three portfolios from BlackRock's example to take such damage. So how do we protect against this? I'm gonna show you exactly how, but first I wanna show you another way that the S&P investments could be harmful for you. While it sounds like 500 companies are a lot and you're well diversified, most of them fall in to a category called large cap. This is essentially just measuring the size of the companies within the index. And when you're building a well-diversified portfolio, there are several other categories that you want to incorporate in your portfolio as well as large cap. And let me show you exactly why. This is an interesting graphic that shows the returns of each kind of investment in different years. Each column at the top is a different year, like 2021, 2020, all the way back to 2011. And if you look at this large cap, which here it's actually broken down further into three different kinds, it does really well in some years, but then other years, it does very poorly. Conversely, other investments did really well when large cap also did very poorly, like international, for example, in 2017, or smaller companies in 2016, real estate in 2014. So you can kind of see that the line for many of these is pretty volatile. It's kind of all over the place like this. So this is a really easy way to understand why diversification is so important. When one thing doesn't do so well, there are others that help pick up the slack. 
And right in the middle is a balance of mixed investments, meaning it's a blend of all of the others. And you can see that it's a much smoother ride compared to the other ones. And this is what most of our clients want for their retirement when they come to talk to us. So how can you best protect yourself from those permanent losses that we talked about before? You do this with a good retirement income strategy. You wanna have different parts of your portfolios doing different jobs. And in this video right here on the screen, I show you exactly how to build a retirement portfolio so that it provides you that longevity and the income strategy that you need to live your lifestyle. So check this one out too. I know it's gonna to be helpful to you. And until next time, stay wise and stay wealthy.